After studying this module, you shall be able to learn about the mechanism by which cells transport ions and small molecules across their membranes. Know about the difference between the facilitated diffusion and the active transport of ions across the cell membrane. Analyze the different types of ionophores used for transporting numerous molecules through the cell membrane. Know about the various enzymes which work for active transporting of ions such as sodium potassium ATPase, calcium ATPase, ABC transporters and so on. Understand the detailed mechanism of sodium potassium pump which is essential in creating membrane potential. The passive cation transport along a concentration gradient via a carrier mechanism proceeds relatively slowly because of the necessary steps of complexation, migration and decomplexation. A more efficient albeit biosynthetically more complex realization of controlled cation diffusion consists in the integration of the ion channels of various complexity into the fluid double layer of biologically phospholipid membranes. Due to the essential physiological importance of ion channel, the external control of the ion selective gates through development of suitable inhibitors or stimulating agents has become one of the most active fields of pharmaceutical and medical research. There are two types of transport processes which exist in nature. These are non-mediated transport and mediated transport. On one hand, non-mediated transport occurs through simple diffusion, while in contrary, the mediated transport occurs through the action of specific carrier proteins. The driving force for the non-mediated flow of a substance through a medium is its chemical potential gradient. Thus, the substance diffuses in the direction that eliminates its concentration gradient at a rate proportional to the magnitude of the gradient. Depending on the thermodynamic of the system, the mediated transport is classified into two categories. These two categories are depicted in figure. First one is the passive mediated transport as shows on the left hand side. It is also known as facilitated diffusion. The second one is the active transport. In passive mediated transport or facilitated diffusion, the transport a specific molecule flows from high concentration to low concentration. Whereas, in the active transport, the molecule is transported from the low concentration to high concentration that is against its concentration gradient. You can see it in figure, there are two types of gradient. The first one is the passive transport and the second one is the active transport. In the first one, where there is diffusion and facilitated diffusion, the movement of the molecules occurs from high concentration to the low concentration, while in the active transport, it occurs against its concentration gradient that is from low concentration to high concentration with the help of ATP molecule. Passive mediated transport substances that are too large or too polar to diffuse across lipid bilayers on their own may be conveyed across membrane via proteins or other molecules that are variously called carriers, permeases, channels and transporters. Ionophores, they are multidentate where n is more than or equal to 6, chelate ligands which either exist as macrocycles or can at least quasi macrocycles after coordination induced ring closure via hydrogen bond interaction. There are two types of ionophores which is shown in figure. The first one is carrier ionophores. It increases the permeability of membranes to their selected ion by binding it diffusing through the membrane and releasing the ion on the other side of the membrane. You can see this on the figure on the left hand side that is the carrier ionophores. The second one is channel forming ionophores. They form transmembrane channels or pores through which their selected ion can diffuse through the membrane. This can be seen in figure that is channel forming ionophore forms a channel like ionophores through which the molecule passes from one part of the membrane to the other. Ionophores transport ions at a remarkably rate. For example, a single molecule of the carrier ionophore valinomycin transports up to 10 raised to the power 4 potassium ions per second across a membrane. This transport 
is depicted in figure. The valinomycin is an inophore which forms a complex with potassium ion and by forming a complex with potassium ion it transport the potassium ion across the membrane. Transporting of potassium ion is shown in figure number 3 right hand side. In channel protein the gates are normally closed to guarantee the maintenance of the concentration gradient. The opening of these gates can be influenced by exogenous or endogenous low molecular weight compounds by release calcium ions by other proteins or by the change in the electrical potential differences that is voltage across the membrane. Voltage controlled channels are thus biological switching elements which serve in the transformation of electrical into chemical signals. The development of receptor specific organic compounds for the blocking of ion channel is one of the main targets of molecular modeling. On the other hand, the unspecific blocking example of potassium ion channels by this cations cesium and barium ion can be easily understood on the basis of the size and charge effects. The blocking of potassium ion channels in the taste receptor by hydrogen ion is probably responsible for the sensing of sore. Next is active transport. Passive mediated transporters including purins, ion channels and proteins facilitate the transmembrane movement of substances according to the relative concentration of the substance on either side of the membrane. Many substances however are available on one side of a membrane in low concentration then are required on the other side of the membrane. Such substances must be actively and selectively transported across the membrane against their concentration gradient. Active transport is an endergonic process that in most cases is coupled to the hydrolysis of ATP that is adenosine triphosphate. The first one in this category is sodium potassium ATPase. One of the most thoroughly studied active transport system is the sodium potassium ATPase in the plasma membranes of higher eukaryotids which was first characterized by Jed Skow. This transmembrane protein consists of two types of subunit a 110 kilodalton non glycosylated alpha subunit that contains the enzymes catalytic activity and ion binding sites and a 55 kilodalton glycoprotein beta subunit of unknown function. The sodium potassium ATPase is often called the sodium potassium pump because it pumps sodium ions out of an so potassium into the cell with the concomitant hydrolysis of intracellular ATP. This extrusion of sodium ions enables animal cells to control their water content osmotically without functioning sodium potassium ATPase to maintain a low internal concentration of sodium ions. Water would osmotically rush into such an extent that animal cells which lack cell walls would swell and burst. The electrochemical gradient generated by the sodium potassium ATPase is also responsible for the electrical excitability of nerve cells. The detailed mechanism as to how the sodium potassium pump work is explained in the next section. Calcium ATPase transient increases in cytosolic calcium ions that is calcium 2 plus trigger numerous cellular responses including muscle contraction, the release or neurotransmitters and glycogen breakdown. Moreover calcium ion is an important activator of oxidative metabolism. The concentration of calcium 2 plus in the cytosol is 0.1 micromolar it is 4 orders of magnitude less than it is in the extracellular spaces. This large concentration gradient is maintained by the active transport of calcium ion across the plasma membrane and the endoplasmic reticulum by a calcium ATPase. The functioning of this receptor, the functioning of this enzyme is shown in figure. This shows the functioning of calcium pump in cytosol as well as in the endoplasmic reticulum which includes the enzyme that is calcium ATPase. The calcium pump actively pumps two calcium ions out of the cytosol
at the expense of ATP hydrolysis while counter transporting 2 or 3 protons. The mechanism of the calcium ATPase resembles that of the sodium potassium ATPase. Then the next category is of ABC transporters. The ABC transporters which pumps ions, sugars, amino acids and other polar and non-polar substances are built from 4 modules two highly conserved cytoplasmic nucleotide binding domains and two transmembrane domains that typically contain six transmembrane helix each. Bacterial ABC transporters mediate the uptake as well as the efflux of a variety of compounds, whereas their eukaryotic counterparts apparently operate only as exporters that transport material out of the cell or into intracellular compartments such as the endoplasmic reticulum, sodium potassium pump. The best known ion pump is the sodium potassium ATPase, a major component of the sodium potassium pump system which is essential in creating membrane potential. ATP stores energy for the cell in the form of free energy that can be released on hydrolysis of the POP phosphate bond of the phosphate polymer. The suitable pH and the required charge gradient are created across a cell membrane by the reactions that exploit the electron acceptor properties of the oxygen molecule, which is ultimately responsible for building up the energy carrier of the cell. The high concentration gradient of sodium ion and potassium ion that exist across the cell membrane are maintained by the activity of an energy requiring pump that transports sodium ions out of the cell in exchange for cal potassium ions inside the cell membrane than outside and a higher concentration of sodium ion outside the cell than inside. The energy for pumping is provided by ATP generated during metabolic reactions in the cell. In the orthocyte cell, 3 sodium ion are pumped outward and 2 potassium ion inward for each molecule of ATP hydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate. Sodium and potassium ion activated adenosine triphosphatase is a complex membrane bound enzymes that catalyzes the transport of 3 sodium ions out of the cell and 2 potassium ions into the cell with associated hydrolysis of Mg ATP that is magnesium ATP. The mechanism of sodium pump requires an account of the role of the lipid, the binding sites for sodium ion, potassium ion, magnesium ion and ATP, the mechanism of hydrolysis of ATP and the way in which this is coupled to the transport of the cation. Based on the reaction sequence, the mechanisms can be outlined. This mechanism is clearly shown step by step in figure. Firstly, ATP and 3 sodium ions bind to the inside of the membrane and the enzyme is phosphorylated in the presence of sodium ion and magnesium ion to give a phosphoenzyme. This enzyme undergoes eversion followed by dephosphorylation in a calcium dependent process and 3 sodium ions are replaced by 2 potassium ion. The loss of ATP triggers conformational change and carries the two potassium ions into the interior of the cell where they are released. Uh, the cycle is thus complete and enzyme is again available for phosphorylation. This process builds up a charge gradient across the cell membrane because three sodium ions are expelled for two potassium ion incorporated and therefore, outer surface becomes relatively positively charged. The mechanism of sodium potassium pump is shown in figure. The sodium ions are moving out of the cell membrane whereas the potassium ions are moving inside the cell membrane with the help of ATP. The activity of the sodium potassium ATPase appears to be linked to the uptake of a variety of solutes by tissues using carrier molecule that facilitate the specific and compulsory co-transport of sodium ion and the solute molecule. When the external sodium ion concentration is maintained much higher than the internal sodium ion concentration by the sodium potassium pump, sodium ion and the solute bound to carrier and will move inward down the sodium ion concentration gradient. Summary, the passive cation transport along a concentration gradient 
via our carrier mechanism proceeds relatively slowly because of the necessary steps of complexation, migration and decomplexation. Active transport is an endergonic process that in most cases is coupled to the hydrolysis of ATP. One of the most thoroughly studied active transport system is the sodium potassium ATPase in the plasma membrane of higher eukaryotes which was first characterized by Jens Kau. The large concentration gradient is maintained by the active transport of calcium across the plasma membrane and the endoplasmic reticulum by a calcium ATPase. Bacterial ABC transporters mediate the uptake as well as the efflux of a variety of compounds, whereas their eukaryotic counterparts apparently operate only as exporters that transport material out of the cell or into intracellular compartments such as endoplasmic reticulum. The best known ion pump is sodium potassium ATPase. A major component of the sodium potassium pump system which is essential in creating membrane potentials. In the erythrocyte cell, 3 sodium ions are pumped outward and 2 potassium ions inward for each molecule of ATP, hydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate. The activity of the sodium potassium ATPase appears to be linked to the uptake of a variety of solutes by tissues using carrier molecules that facilitate the specific and compulsory co-transport of sodium ion and the solute molecule.